See, women from the very beginning have operated with spirits of seduction. But once you come to the old rugged cross, glory to God, and allow the Lord to go inside and remove things off the pantry shelf that shouldn't be there, you won't fall prey to that spirit. But these young girls would come and entice him, and he said, Miss Holmes, that night I would be meeting them somewhere, and, uh, and I would engage in sex. So uh, he was uh, acting just like his dad, the same spirit had entered into him. But I want you to know he got set free. I want you to know he called me a year later. He had graduated high school. He was on vacation at that time. He said, I'm getting ready to enroll in, oh, I've already enrolled in Oral Roberts University, and uh, I'll be going there in the fall, I think he said it was. And he said, I also have two preaching engagements lined up. I already knew he was a minister when he was here and telling me about all the syllabus he had bought and quoting scripture. He loved God. But nobody had taught him about consecration, that you have to cleanse out the temple. And this is what happens so much. People fall in love with God, and they begin to walk with God, begin to move forth in their ministry, but they don't clean out the pantry. They don't go in and deal with what's on the shelf, and the first item again being self. And I brought out the hot rotel, because I tell you when self rises up, it's a hot mess. There are spirits of perversion of all kind. Moses dealt with it in the Old Testament, and uh, Paul dealt with it using uh, uh, some more modern terms. But uh, I love the way Moses dealt with it in the Old Testament. They simply just went after the spirit of bestiality and let it be known that that would not be allowed among God's people. What is bestiality? When a person has sexual relationships with an animal. These are things that are going on now in the body of Christ. And you say, Sister Pat, that's way out. No, I've ministered people that have been engaged in that, dealing with the spirit of bestiality, bound up with that spirit. Oh, my God, in the same Jesus, the same power of the blood of the Lamb set them free also. But we have to want to cleanse out the pantry, amen, of self. I've dealt with people bound up in spirits of lesbianism, women sleeping with women, homosexuality, and then whoremongering. Oh, my goodness. Just where maybe you're heterosexual and you, you're a man, you, you're, you love women, you're a woman, you love a man. That's the right order. But, oh, but you can still be a whoremonger. And every woman, if you're a man that comes in your presence, you want to lay with that woman. Or vice versa, you're a woman, every man that comes in your presence. God wants to cleanse the temple. Jesus is coming back for a bride without spot and wrinkle. I've talked to, uh, one time I even interviewed a lesbian, a uh, most uh, wonderful lady, uh, love talking to a kind lady, and I asked her, I said, uh, what happened? What made you as a woman desire to sleep with women? And she said, uh, Sister Pat, it was years ago. She said, I was, she told me the six or seven years old, and this 17-year-old boy raped her. And I knew there had to be a door. I've talked to quite a few. I did prison ministry 12 years, and oh my God, some of the stories that I heard there and some of the people that I saw fit, set free. The power of God works in any venue. But anyway, she uh, said, I made up in my mind, even at that point, that I never wanted to be around another man when he raped me. Now you see what happened. She needed to go in to her pantry of Self, and she need to pull out that bitterness and that hatred. The enemy had come in and had contaminated her thoughts, messed with her emotions, distorted her desires, distorted her passions, and now she was sleeping with a woman. The same happens with men. I've talked to men that were... Uh, uh, betrayed uh, by friends of theirs. Uh, one young man that wound up uh, as a homosexual, uh, he told me his school teacher was the one that uh, sodomized him. And then that spirit entered into him, and he began to live a lifestyle of sodomy. But praise God, he cried out to God. I was able to get him material, able to help with him, and then he pushed himself and, and, and went to certain meetings and had hands laid on. And uh, the, the uh, whole ending of the story, the victory to the story, he's now ministering the word of God, and he's set free. There were some struggles 
after the spirit was cast out because desire had been there for so long. There were some times that he failed, but I want you to know he got back up and he's serving God and he's free from that spirit. These things are demon spirits that have been around a long time and they capture people and they hold them bound. But Jesus said he came to set the captives free. And I want you to know today that if you're bound up in any of this, Jesus has come to set you free. All you have to do is admit what you're dealing with, cry out to the Lord, and ask the Lord to deliver you. He will put others in your path, and uh, he'll, he'll set you free. Uh, he'll even, uh, I've seen where you can just pray for yourself. I tell my Bible study that. Get your anointing oil. Lay hands on your own head and command it to go. Because Jesus has said, life and death is in the power of the tongue. Again, dealing with the acts of perversion, and I'm dealing strictly today with the body of Christ. Those that aren't in the body of Christ, perhaps this sounds so stupid to you, because you're at the place where this is my body and I do what I want to do. I know what that thought life is about. I used to be there. But once I said to Jesus, Lord, come into my heart. And once I began to find out that in the word, he tells us that we are to be sanctified, to be set apart, that our whole bodies be sanctified holy, the Bible said, W-H-O-L-L-Y, to be sanctified holy. And the scripture goes on to say spirit, soul, and body. It's the soul where the enemy invades. The soul is made up of the mind because some of us have mindsets that can't tell you nothing. Degrees have, have elevated you above the word of God. And uh, the apostle Paul was in that place. Oh, but he got to a place. When he fell in love with Jesus, he said, I count all of that loss. All of those degrees that he had, he was a smart man. But I have seen that in this walk of life. People that are so degreed, so educated, and so smart, sometimes it's hard for those people to yield to the hand of God. But one of the things that self has to do is submit. The Bible tells us, submit yourself under the hand of God. We have to submit. We have to recognize that God is all knowing, all power, all glory to God. And when we submit to him, then he will enlighten us with his wisdom, his knowledge, and his understanding. Again, perversion in the body of Christ. I'll never forget uh, ministering to a lady from another church, came uh, one day some years ago, and uh, she was experiencing some medical problems in, in her body. And uh, because we're plowing ground, I'll, I'll just share. And uh, she said, and I, I feel like it's because I'm involved in oral sex, Sister Pat. And oh my goodness, the deliverance ministry started a few days later with several of us praying for her. And I want you to know that was the first spirit that manifested as we were praying for her. She began to uh, act out that particular perverted act. And oh my goodness, anyway, long story short, she got set free. She got set free because we called on the name of Jesus. God invented sex. Yes, he did. But what has happened, man has perverted sex. Even all the way back, as I said, to the days uh, when Moses was teaching the people. God had invented sex between a man and his wife. God has a set of standards for his chosen people. I love the scripture in the book of Jeremiah. The prophet Jeremiah was speaking according to the unction of the Lord. And the Lord was complaining about his people. And the Lord makes the statement about the uh, sea. He said the sea will go here and it'll flow so far this direction. It'll flow so far in that direction. He said but the sea always stays right there within its boundaries. He said but my people they don't know boundaries. Oh my God, and am I learning that? I was so blessed on Sunday when I was visiting a church uh, right up the road. And the pastor said, I've never done this. And he's been preaching over 50-something years. He said, but today I'm going to preach on compulsive sexual addictions. 
He said, I have known for a long time that I've needed to address this area because of what I'm seeing happening in the body of Christ and because of the people that I'm counseling and having to minister to. I'm in church, okay, Miss Home, and about two months later, I got a phone call. I wrote about him in my book. I got a phone call, and they said, we want you to come to uh, the funeral home here in Baytown. They told me which one. Said, we're having his visitation service tonight. 